Our district is always making decisions that they feel are best suited for our teachers and our educators in Arlington ISD. But one decision that I feel a little different from them on is the um, rollout of our active learning cycle campuses. So their vision for our strategic plan that I think was supposed to go through this year, 2022, was that all campuses would be a part of the active learning cycle. The active learning cycle means that teachers on your campus are certified as best practice teachers, meaning that they are doing best practices for all content areas. Um, they have well-developed classroom management. They also are utilizing rubrics, differentiated rubrics for their instruction and their teaching, along with pulling workshops or small groups throughout the day. All of this is great in theory, but my campus is a campus that is IR, improvement required, in need of improvement. So this decision, even though we are trending to come out of IR this school year, is a, a big impact, has plays a big part or impact on my campus. This decision means that we have to have teams that are ready to move into active learning cycle for the 2022-2023 school year. I do not feel this is a great move for our leadership or our teachers or our students on our campus because our teachers are still working on strong tier one instruction and reteaching skills that needed to be retaught when students are not mastering that tier one instruction. I do feel that they can use rubrics, but I don't think that rubrics need to be the sole um, instruction for their day-to-day -day teaching because I think it's hard for them to assess and evaluate their students that are four different levels in their classroom. I feel like they could just take the gradual lease process of modeling what the instruction or the lesson should look like, then breaking off and doing guided practice with their students, and this allows them as a teacher to go around and facilitate the, the learning, and they can capture anecdotal notes for students who are mastering and not mastering a skill. Then when it's the you do time or independent practice time, they can pull students to their small group table. When you are ALC and you're doing all of that with four different levels, that is a lot for a teacher to manage, and I want to ensure that none of our students get left behind because that is what put us into IR in the first place. We had students who had gaps, and those gaps were not being met, and they were not making enough growth deemed by the state. So I think in theory, ALC is a great idea, but I think that sometimes we have to scale it back and look at each campus as its own individual entity, not look at everybody as a whole. What is always best for one campus may not be best for another campus. So when your leadership or your principals are saying we're not quite ready for that, I think it's imperative that as leadership for our district or for our professional learning team that they listen and they listen to people's reasons why and they take those into account. I think my principal, Mrs. Martinez, has done a really great job with speaking up for our campus and telling them what's best and what's not best for our campus. And because she comes with solutions and she brings evidence and data to the table, they really do listen to her. So I'm hoping and praying that our district professional learning team and um, our district leadership will listen to her in this case and let us get out of IR and make sure that we can ensure that we do not go back into IR and we continue to grow our students. And then once we're out and we know that we're good and our data keeps trending up, we can add another support like ALC to our campus to support our students. Thank you.